Now to the phone, since it's Open Line Friday, it's Doug in San Antonio. Great to have you on the program, sir. Hello. Hi, Rush. Thanks. Um, I wanted to speak to the uh, question of when the president knew and why uh, Secretary Panetta refused to uh, support the CIA annex request for uh, either to move to the consulate or to be reinforced. Um, Within a few minutes of the consulate being under attack, I'm a retired lieutenant colonel, special operations planner for 15 years. Um, The personal security detail for the ambassador notified the communications room in Tripoli, who then on the top secret side sent a message to the White House Situation Room that the ambassador was uh, in peril, okay? And they did that by code word, and it would have been within minutes of the attack commencing. The White House Situation Room has a list of what's called Essential Elements of Friendly Information. That's the military's acronym for it, but they would have a similar thing, critical information list. Certain things go right to the person that's standing next to the president, both military and civilian uh, leadership. So he would have known within minutes, or, or is supposed to be informed within minutes, because an ambassador is a four-star equivalent, very high, very important person, you know, represents the president, and essentially is the president's, uh, you know, is the surrogate of the president in that country. So the White House cannot deny that the president knew immediately. They are. They are. Well, well, it's, it, it's a bold-faced lie. You know, I'm giving you some inside baseball information. Um, I, look at I believe you. You're talking about watch desks. That tells me you know what you're talking about. Well, it's 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 even a little more um, uh, um, frustrating than that. So when 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 that message that code word goes out, flash traffic, that an ambassador is in peril. Okay. The we have heard this. This is in in our parlance. The way we heard this, Doug, was the uh, essentially the panic button was hit. That, that's how we civilians, this was explained to me the first time somebody who knew what they were talking about re- referenced this as a, a panic button essentially was hit. And, and that once that happens, everybody that receives it knows what's going on. There's no doubt about it. So that's pretty much true, right? Right. But it's even more detailed than that, Rush. What it means is when the code word goes out, there's standard operating procedures. The geographic combatant commander that's responsible for Libya would have been part of that message traffic. And his think in extremist force, you know, which is a special forces unit. Okay, let me stop you there for another question. So, because what a lot of people have been told, the excuse that has been offered, uh, in in fact, from uh, Condoleezza Rice on on Greta Van Susten a couple nights ago, the impression is, well, there's so much traffic coming in. There's so many emails, so many cables, so many memos. It's impossible. It would take somebody hours to sift through it. What you're telling me is that it there are systems designed to penetrate all that in a real emergency. Well, there, there's three networks, Rush. You, the, the emails that have been uh, of, of been released are unclassified emails. The, on the top secret side, a flash traffic message from the embassy Tripoli to the White House Situation Room, it's like an IM. I mean, it's immediately responded to. It, it, you have to acknowledge receipt of it, okay? So it's immediate. It gets to the person, the watch officer sitting there, Boom, flashes on his screen. He has to acknowledge receipt. And then there's a protocol for who he then sends it to. And he physically turns to someone, the senior guy in, on watch, and says, this is a critical element of information. POTUS needs to hear this. And that's what would have happened. So no one in the White House can deny that. Well, they can deny it. But the fact is, is, is the protocol says someone marched their happy little ass up to the the senior guy standing next to POTUS and said, sir, uh, Ambassador Libya is in peril. And, and, if he, and if he was missing, that is even a higher precedence. And then the, the chain would have also gone out automatically to the geographic combatant commander, AFRICOM, you know, and he would have then turned to his special operations uh, commander and said, I want, you, I want the in-extremist force you know, strip ready in five minutes. And evidently they were strip ready in Sigonella. And they would have had the assets to penetrate the airspace. You know, an MC-130 Papa, which is a, a, is a C-130 specially equipped with the electronic countermeasures, they, they didn't need permission 
to enter Libyan airspace. Okay? I'm giving you a lot of inside baseball stuff and <laughs> maybe putting myself in a little peril by doing it. But the in extremist force, they would have been chomping a bit to do this. It was turned down by POTUS at his 5 p.m. Eastern Time meeting with the principals. That's when he put the kibosh on everything. It was a conscious act. It essentially has to be because, you know, the in extremist force is, is, is required to be prepared to do in extremist non combatant evacuation operations for its geographic responsibility. The entire continent of Africa. So there's always somebody ready to go. And the aircraft are always prepared to go. It, it, it's, it's maddening to say that it was not an intelligent. An intelligence guy is not a decision maker. He's just some skinny analyst dude that tells the, the decision makers, this is what we know. Well, the decision makers who are so risk averse now need perfect intelligence. They would have had to have, you know, in the calculus of this, to know that, you know, whatever the attacking force was, if I put 15 or 50 or 100 operators in the ground, you know, they'll have success. Well, no one knows that. In soft planning, you plan to fail half the time. What, about, what, what about the story we've been told that not only was there's so much traffic coming in that it was impossible to find the right stuff, which you've now explained. But they're also telling us that the president wasn't told for a while. Uh, and even now, I mean, as, of, as, as late as today, recently as today, they're saying that the three most recent emails, it sounds like we're talking about flash traffic's not emails, right? Flash traffic is, is digital from station to station. Right, so they're misleading us left and right. They're trying to say, well, the president, they will not explain. They will not tell us what happened to the three emails and why he didn't get them or why he wasn't told or when he knew or, or what. They're basically portraying the president as removed from all this. Well, <laughs> bottom line is a flash traffic saying that the ambassador's in peril or worse, missing, you know, the protocol is for someone to physically make contact with the person in the chain that's supposed to determine what happens next. Now, I can't, you know, I, I wasn't in the... Okay, let me ask, so a question came up yesterday that I couldn't answer, and I need to ask you, uh, just from what you're, you're saying, but let, let's assume for a second, this is unreal, but let's assume they can't find... POTUS. I mean, let's, let's assume he's just not engaged. Who has trigger authority on a response to something like this? Well, an extremist. Um, it, 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 okay, I mean, who can... Who, you, you say we don't need permission to send a C-130 in there to disrupt. Who orders it in there in a situation like this? Who has the authority to order the C-130s, wherever they are, Italy, wherever they are, to take action. If you can't find the president, is, it, is right. the president the only guy that can give that order? No, sir. Okay. Basically, in the absence of permissions, okay, you have standing orders. And one of the standing orders to the geographic combatant commander is to preserve life of American citizens. Exactly. His, Precisely. So, and he's a four star. You know, he's in um, Germany. AFRICOM, you know, headquarters is in Germany. You know, and and their and their and their op center would have been monitoring this in real time because it's part of their geographic responsibility, and they would have been going through the different you know permutations of courses of action of who can get there the quickest. Now, in in their ge geographic area, they have combined joint task force Horn of Africa, which is in Djibouti. You know, and I served there when it was the Joint Special Operations Task Force Crisis Response Element, and we had responsibility for. All of CENTCOM and AFRICOM and Africa, because at the time there was no AFRICOM. And we had the capacity to get from where we were in Djibouti to Benghazi in about three hours, four hours, depending on what we wanted to take. Now, if we wanted to go in there with a lot of operators, and at the time we had about 100 operators, it would have taken us probably five hours. Okay, because Doug, we, you're, you're sitting out here. You obviously are intimately familiar with all this. So what... It's going through your mind, A, in real time when you hear about this, and then in subsequent days when you hear the excuses or explanations that have been offered for why no action was taken. I mean, I may be putting you on the spot and you can't share that with us, but i got to ask you. 
uh, it stems from Desert One, Rush. It stems from the failure of Desert One during the Iranian hostage rescue. And, and, and that has become, you know, what commander wants to repeat that? You know, now, at the lieutenant colonel level, at the colonel level, of the in extremis force, of all these different headquarters, at the State Department, everybody was saying, let's go. Let's get boots on the ground and kick these people's asses and get our people, you know? But, but who makes those decisions? Is POTUS, the POTUS, state, at death? And they had a 5 o'clock Eastern Time meeting, and they said, no. You know, we're willing to have the consulate overrun and the ant overrun and all those people, you know, which is before would have been killed, you know, dozens. We're willing to well, people are going to want up. The, the, the fact that they're afraid of replicating Carter's boondoggle, that's not going to fly with a lot of people. Well, right. sir, I hate to break it to you, but that has... The people that are four stars right now, okay, were young officers, and they saw what happened to the leadership, okay? Now, I'm not saying on the special ops side. You know, the special ops guys... But, I mean, there are alternate explanations. This. There are, like, political campaign explanations that people have conjured up to explain why Obama would not want any military activity taking place there in order to uh, make sure that an image is created for his campaign. We're defeating al-Qaeda. They're on the run. we got bin Laden. Uh, yeah, we can't... I, all those memes, you know, are probably in play. But mostly it's just it's just incompetence... And 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 not understanding, you know, the principle of you don't leave anyone behind. Okay? Oh, that's Doug. Look, I, I I know you've stuck your neck out here, and you obviously know your stuff uh, intimately well. And I really appreciate uh, your call. It's fabulous to get your uh, input and knowledge uh, on this. Somewhere, somebody refused to make a gutsy call. Well, you can say. Some ambassadors, some Obama, whoever, but that's what it boils down to. Somebody refused to make a gutsy call.